grade kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first stage and second stage should finish propellant loading about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up at around the T-3 minute mark and the second stage finishing at the T-2 minute mark. Stage 1 locks load is complete. And there's that call out that stage 1 locks loading has completed. As you may have noticed, there are white clouds forming around the vehicle. Those clouds are comprised of the chilled gas above the LOX tank that is vented overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that vented oxygen mixes with the warmer California air, it condenses into clouds. At the T-60 second mark, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown, and then just inside of T-2 seconds, will light the M1D engines for liftoff. The Earth Care payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking green, and the range is ready to support our T-0 of 3.20 p.m. Pacific time. And with that, we're proceeding into the last couple minutes of terminal count. Stage 2 locks load is complete. And there's that call out that stage 2 locks loading is complete. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant and oxidizer. Ground gas closeouts. Good call out there. In about 20 seconds from now, we should hear a call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. And as a reminder, this is a call out that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. Lastly, we're waiting for the launch director, or LD, to give the final go for today's launch. LD is go for launch. And with that call out that the LD is go for launch, we are set to launch ESA's Earth Care payload. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 4 East carrying the Earth Care satellite. Now, after clearing the tower, we tilted or gimbaled the engines to initiate a roll maneuver, which you may notice in the Stage 1 camera view. This enables the vehicle's Power antennas. Telemetry, not middle. This enables the vehicle's antennas to stay in the best position for communicating with the ground. In just a few moments from now, we'll be throttling down the engines in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. Now, as Falcon 9 accelerates through the thicker lower atmosphere, the air density decreases, and Falcon 9 passes Max Q once the air density lowers faster than the increasing speed of the vehicle. So keep an eye on the Stage 1 telemetry on the bottom left hand corner of your screen to watch for these speed changes through ascent. And back chill. Good call out there. And as a reminder, the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit.
Now we've got six events coming up happening in rapid succession. This will start with Main Engine Cutoff, or MECO, where we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Followed by that will be Stage Separation, where the first and second stages separate. Third will be the Stage 1 Flip, a maneuver to turn the first stage around. Then we'll have the Second Engine Start, or SES-1, on the second stage. Fifth will be the first stage boost back burn, a controlled burn that reduces the forward velocity away from the launch pad. And lastly will be fairing separation, where the two fairing halves will jettison away from the second stage. And all of these events should happen in just a few moments from now. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back burn. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you heard and maybe even saw those six events that happened back to back, which again were Miko, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, the first stage boost back burn, and fairing separation. We'll be attempting to retrieve those fairing halves, both flying for their first time today, once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Go Beyond. Coming up shortly, we should hear a call out for boost back shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage 1, boost back shutdown. And there's that call out for stage 1, boost back shutdown. We're currently T plus three minutes and 34 seconds into the mission. Our next major mission milestone will be... Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Good call out there. Our next major mission milestone will be the first stage's entry burn, which will take place just past the T plus six minute mark. Now to start the entry burn, we will relight three of the M1D engines on the Falcon 9 first stage, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. The entry burn helps reduce the heat generated from the friction of the atmosphere and reduces the aerodynamic forces acting on Falcon, which helps maintain controlled flight and prepare for the landing burn. Now during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving really fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases or plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Some amazing views of the MVAC engine on our Falcon 9 second stage as it takes the Earth Care payload to orbit. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. Now, the Falcon 9 first stage that supported, is supporting today's mission is performing this entry burn for its seventh time, coming up shortly. Now, the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. And the MVAC engine on the second stage, with a much wider nozzle, is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now, as a reminder, the first stage supporting today's mission is flying for its seventh time, having previously supported NASA Crew-7, CRS-29, PACE, Transporter-10, and two Starlink missions. It's also worth mentioning that this is the 56th Falcon 9 launch of 2024 and the 18th launch of Falcon 9 this year from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Coming up in just a few moments, we should hear a call out for the entry burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that confirmation of entry burn startup. This burn will last about 20 seconds and will slow the vehicle down in preparation for the landing burn.
Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's confirmation of stage one entry burn shutdown. We're now waiting for Falcon 9 to land back at landing zone 4 at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. And it just so happens that landing zone 4 is actually only about 450. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Good call Stage out. one FTS has saved. Good call outs there. It just so happens that landing zone 4 is actually only about 440 meters away from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg. Stage 1 transonic. Good call out there that Stage 1 is transonic. We should hear a call out for landing burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage just in just a few stage moments. Stage 1 landing burn. And there you have it. Falcon 9 has successfully Stage one landing confirmed. Falcon 9 has successfully Stage 2 FTS is saved. Stage 2 is in terminal guidance. Good call outs there. Falcon 9 has successfully landed at landing zone 4 at Vandenberg. This was the seventh launch and landing for this first stage. And this landing marks SpaceX's 314th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Coming up next, we'll hear a call out for Seco 1 or second engine cutoff 1 on the Falcon 9 second stage currently on your screen. MVAC shutdown. And there's that call out for MVAC shutdown on the second stage. We're now waiting for confirmation of nominal orbital insertion. Nominal orbit insertion. And there's that call out. Now with that call out, we're just one major milestone left in our mission, which is payload deployment coming up in about a minute and a half from now. Now, Earth Explorer missions like this one are state-of-the-art science and research missions that deliver data to fill gaps in Earth system science and demonstrate new space technologies. EarthCare is the largest and most complex Earth Explorer satellite to date. The satellite carries four state-of-the-art scientific instruments that work together to provide a holistic view of the interplay between clouds, aerosols, and radiation, a cloud profiling radar, an atmospheric LIDAR, a multispectral imager, and a broadband radiometer. Together, these instruments will allow scientists to better understand the processes governing the physics and interaction of clouds and aerosols and their impact on Earth's temperature. We're expecting payload deployment of the EarthCare satellite in just under 40 seconds from now. As a reminder, this is the 56th Falcon 9 launch of 2024 and the 18th launch of Falcon 9 this year from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Earth care separation confirmed. An amazing view there on your screen. Successful deployment of the Earth care payload. And with that confirmation, we'll be bringing today's webcast to a close. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 351st overall mission to date and 56th mission of this year. We want to thank the European Space Agency and JAXA for entrusting us with today's mission and all of you for joining us this afternoon. If you're interested in following the EarthCare mission further, tune into youtube.com slash ESA for more. And if you're interested in more launch coverage, be sure to check out spacex.com slash launches for the most up-to-date information. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.